Interview and job search strategies that work. Today, I was at a gas station, and I just happened to talk to the the patron, the the clerk there, and when I was in the checkout, I saw by some things. I had my book with me, my interview and job search strategies at work book, the the book rather, right? And um, so the clerk's like, "Hey, hey, what's that? You know, I said, well, have you ever wanted to make more money? Have you ever thought about a career change? And um, the person's name is Jackie. So Jackie's like, yeah, yeah, I'm always looking for, and I said, um, this book here is about how to get uh, an IT job, right? And she said, oh, well, that's computer stuff. I don't know much about that. And so I just, I just, you know, I just, in my own way, I just painted a picture as if it like the, I guess, Mount Rushmore or the mountain of, of knowledge that everybody thinks IT has to know. I just explained and I said, hey, the people that work in IT, they don't know. So a lot of them don't know themselves. They're just filling a seat, you know, a lot of times. And it's, it's the only reason they're there. Some of them, not all, but some of them, the reason they're there is they have a cert. And you may know this from maybe you Google stuff or looking yourself. If you have a certification, say like um, a Cisco cert or A plus or something like that, you got the job. I mean, because the company has to have so many people having a cert a certification. Maybe it's um, um, you know the requirement for the job says certification, right? So they have to have the certification. And so I explained to her. I said, Jack, you know, Jackie, there's a lot of jobs overseas right now. There's a lot of jobs in the state side. And if you wanted to work for, say, the government as like a government contractor, you just need a security plus. And, you know, I, I just in a couple of minutes that I was talking to her, I said, hey, um, here's how it works. You go there, you get the cert and you go overseas or you stay here and get a job, a government contractor, whatnot. Now, there. They're not going to expect you to know everything. And when you get into the job, you know, you're going to feel like, oh, I don't know enough. And and she told me, I just don't, I wouldn't feel like I know enough. I wouldn't feel like I, um, you know, I'm up to, up at the par. And I said, most people that go into IT jobs don't know. Some people, a lot of people teach them the OJT. As long as you just like, um, I told her, I said, as long as you just like, you know, Maybe touch, touch, your, um, touch your chin a little bit and just ask questions and have a book with you and write down what they say. You say, I don't, I don't know. You say things like, you know, I don't know. Let me research that if they ask you a question. And, you know, I, I kind of, she kind of told me, like, I, what I'm worried about is not knowing, right? And I said, well, if, if you don't know, it, what, what's the flip side? If you do know, what if they say you don't know or they pretend like you don't know anyway or they make a fool of you? What then? I mean, you, if you know the knowledge and they still make a, fun, a fool of you, what then? You know, your worst fear is coming to permission, ba- permission basically. Um, your fear of being, you know, um, I don't know or of being, you know, found out that I don't know everything. And I told her, I said, everybody, nobody knows everything. Can't, it can't happen. No way, you know. It's not possible in IT, especially IT. I painted a picture. For instance, I said, if, if you want to get into government contracting, and this goes for everybody, really, um, you get the baseline certification. And Security Plus, right? A Security Plus will get you into any government job, basically, right? You don't have to have any other credentials, usually, a lot of times. Because um, I, I've seen it firsthand, uh, people I know. Um they didn't have so the job they were doing was like a network admin, but they didn't have a, they had a CCNA, but they didn't have a security plus. So their company actually let them go. They said you don't have a security plus. Now, mind you, they've been doing the job for how many years, and they know the job, but because they didn't have security plus, the government said get out. You know because well, not the government, but their their employer, who the the government the government is the customer, right? So the employer said. We gotta let you go because our customer, the government, says you have to have Security Plus. Otherwise, you can't work here, basically. And so I told her, like, you know, CompTIA is the company that puts out Security Plus. 
and it's like three hundred and fifteen dollars, I think. It's a hundred questions that gets you like an IA level two certification. So that meets the the DOD eighty five seventy mandate. The other one is a CASP, C A S P. You might have heard, or you may have not heard of a CISSP. So the CISSP, that's I think seven hundred dollars to take the test. It's a couple hundred questions, I think. Um, and that gives you an IE level three, according to the DOD 8570M or whatever it is. But the CASP, C-A-S-P, I think it stands for certified. I don't know. I had to look it up. I'll put in show notes what it, what it stands for. But anyway, the CASP is, I think, 300 some odd dollars. And that gets you a level, a level three as well. IE level three. So that's an easier test than the Security Plus, by the way. Um, I have know people that have taken both, and they say by far CASP is a lot easier. CASP is a lot easier. Yeah, so I I know it's probably, you know, people want to, ha- okay, I want to know, you know, the job, right, before I get in there. And unfortunately, that in IT, that's not always the case. You know, there's... Because it, it always moves, it always it's always getting uh, changing, right? I mean, I could understand if it's math, you're a math teacher or something like that. That's not really going to change all that much. But IT, there's just so many different ways to do a lot of the same thing, and there and there's different words for the same stuff. Some of the terminology, some may call. Um, for instance, I, I say this a lot. There's um, the letter bang. What bang is? If you say like to an IT person. Oh, just put a bang, right? And a bang is an exclamation point. So that's what they call a bang, right? Or a hash, hash sign. Well, that's the, um, you know, the on your phone, it's like um, not star, but the other one, the pounds. I think it's pound, right? So that's the same thing as a hash, right? So, you know, I, I mentioned to Jackie, I said, um, if you want to get out of this type of job, here's what you do. Um, I, of course, I gave her my course, right? My um, my um, get a job in five and learn IT and get a job in five days. Essentially, it's a a Udemy course uh, that I put together. It took me like two or three months to put together. Um, a lot of hours of putting it together, and it's how I how I teach is I teach with the errors in there. I teach you as if you know nothing from start to finish, and I, I you know I told her I said. You know, if if you do one thing in a day, just one thing, IT, or just take this course, one one uh, one segment or one lecture a day, and just learn something. You know, maybe you have to watch it three or four times or ten times, um, but you're just going to learn something, and you just start immersing yourself in the. And I, I I paint the picture as I do on this podcast of transitioning. So obviously, you know. Your entry level IT, right? You know, how do you get into that? Like, the, the going from, I don't know, um, what's the, I don't know, analogy I can use, but basically it's like this: if you're at a, you're a clerk at a store, what's similar to that? What kind of IT is similar to that? Help desk. In a way, you're helping pick people, spend their money. You're answering questions about a product sometimes. So, my my advice is um, to Jackie, and it was. You know, it, it's in my because I, uh, my advice, of course, is to Jackie because uh, I, I told her this, but is is basically you know, get a security plus, you know, and just try and apply with what you have now, right? And if you, if you're, you know, if you, you have a customer service background, I told her that, and uh, if you can get on, awesome. You know, if not, maybe you need to pad your resume a little more. You know, it's something like. Um, working for a call center, that really helps a lot. Or a an ISP, internet service provider, such as like Time Warner or Cox, Cox Communication. And so the thing about that is, obviously I didn't tell her this part, um, but I told her I'd talk about it in my podcast and I'm going to send her this so she's listening now, hopefully. So Jackie, you know, the first thing to do is... Put your resume together and just, you know, take my course, of course, right? And then when you learn one thing, like, for instance, Active Directory, you learn a little bit of Active Directory. You learn 
how to install Windows. Put that down, you know, installing Windows 2008. Put it in your resume. Start applying at those, those jobs, the help desk jobs. And also put on there pursuing Security Plus CE because it's going to get tagged in the search engine and other searches or whatever. And you, what you're looking for is a callback. You're looking for someone to start talking to you about a, a job and get you kind of excited. Like, oh, wow, they really liked my resume. They, they value my skill set, right? Because you can do all this work, you know, take the course and all that. Um, and okay, awesome. I have the course, but if you don't apply it and you don't get, if you don't get an aha moment from it, you don't get that feedback from anybody else saying, Hey, you know what? You're doing really great. You have a lot of good skills that we like to have. And the fact that you're customer service and you can talk to folks is really good. That's, and you have a good attitude. Those are the three things really, you know, um, uh, and security plus of course, you know, and I'll tell you, start with overseas jobs. Um, such as Qatar, maybe UAE, maybe Germany. There, I won't say they're. It's it's not easier for to get there, but a lot le less people want to go overseas than you think. Believe it or not, you'd be surprised at how many people, when they think of like Qatar, um, they don't know what it's like, or Germany, they don't know what it's like. You'd be surprised at how many people don't actually want to go and work overseas. They want to travel and go there, but they don't want to work there. Or they, they think it's like, you know, a half million dollars a year when it's not. And then that recruiter calls them and says, we're only giving you like $200. I mean, I'm 200000 a year or 100000 So they, oh, yeah, enough of that. I'm not going there for that, you know. Meanwhile, not under, knowing that just getting over there, it opens your door a lot wider because, of course, you know, you family, uh, you have family and all these other things. So that you have to take that consideration. But if you're uh, a person who just, you know, works at a, a grocery store, a clerk, whatever, and you have those soft skills, the customer service skills, basically, that's just another thing to add. So, so here's what I would say as well. Just keep applying. Keep applying in the boards, you know, um, the job boards. Start searching for the country Qatar. Dubai, UAE, Kuwait, Germany, and and also Jackie, don't put a don't put an address in your resume. Just put a a name, an email address, and a phone number, and then maybe put in your resume or if you fill out these um, job boards, basically, put down um, you want to relocate. You don't mind relocating, and every every call that you get, everybody that calls you, uh, even if whatever it's whatever. If it's in the country, if it's in the states, even if it's in the states or other countries, always say yes. I'm willing to relocate. You you want to get to the point where you're talking to a, um, you're getting an interview, because once you get an interview, again it's it's gonna just that much more knowledge that you you have that experience that you're ha you're you're gonna have. Think of it like a playbook, basically. This is nothing more than a playbook where. You're, you're going through the interview process. You're learning what you don't know and, and how to answer questions. Write them down, okay? Maybe even record um, the interviews as well so that you, you know uh, how to answer certain questions. And when they talk about, you know, your skill set, write that thing, write those things down they're looking for. Maybe you can Google some of that. Maybe you can watch a video on YouTube. Maybe my course doesn't have everything that you're looking for. And so you're looking for that one little unique thing and you put right, write that down. Okay. They need me to know this. Okay. Write that down. If you're, if you're talking about help desk, I, I, you can't go wrong with learning active directory because active directory, um, that every, every, every systems administrator, everybody that touches windows, like a, a server admin, all of those individuals know active directory or have touched it at one point or another. Everybody worth, you know, their salt basically knows or has touched Active Directory. And if you, Jackie, if you watch my video, my course, you'll know Active Directory as well. So what, what things should you be looking for job-wise, right? So keyword, um, keyword search, help desk, just the keyword in dice.com. I'd start there. Uh, Monster.com, careerbuilder.com, careerjet.com. Type in... Um, type in Active Directory, type in Help Desk. Since the course 
the the course, the IT course I made is centered around Commvault. You can put the word Commvault in there as well in the search. And the reason I did that is because a lot of the students asked, hey, we, we'd like to learn how Commvault works with these other things. You know, how does it work with SharePoint? How does it work with SQL? How does it work with Active Directory, um, AWS? How does it relate to that? How, how, does it, how do I set that up? And that's what the course is about, really. It's all these other skills around this one skill, this niche skill. And it's Commvault. And it's a backup piece of software. So you put on your resume Commvault. When you pass, you know, you go through my course and, you know, um, you know Commvault a little bit, right? Just put in your resume. And, and then just start to go on these interviews, right? Start, start going on these interviews. The other thing to do is go to WordPress.com and create your own WordPress um, website. Your own blog, essentially. You know, Jackie, have your own blog. Have, have something social like, um, you know, I'm, you're a, a, what is it, a contributor, like content contributor, right? If you learn something on this course, blog about it. WordPress.com, you know, maybe Jackie.wordpress.com or whatever it is. And then write about it. Oh, I learned this today. This is really cool. Have, your, have a Twitter. Start a Twitter account. Start an Instagram account. I know it sounds like a lot, uh, but it's a way for you to reflect. And when you're talking to a potential recruiter, this is just another way of them knowing who you are. You know, you want to know who they are, but they're going to want to know who you are. So if you're like, oh, I have a blog. Okay. You know, you have some content that they can see. Oh, okay. I see that you've started to learn this. And I see your transition that you've learned X, Y, Z. And you've talked about, okay, the challenges perhaps of learning, you know, Active Directory or whatnot. And they can see that. And like, oh, okay, there's a little more context there, you know. And you're more personable. Okay, that's a person we want to hire, you know. They're uh, really talking about um, their, their skill set, trying to hone their craft. A lot of recruiters, what they want, or not recruiters necessarily, but the, the IT operations manager, they want to know. Um, you know, are you, are you getting better? Are you building, um, are you building your resume? You're building your skill set. You're not just stopping. And the blog is a way to, to, to really relay that. Also thing, um, here's what I do, Jackie. I'll tell you what I do. If I have a job interview, this is exactly what I do. I go out and I look at the location. You know, I'll, I'll entertain any, any job offer, by the way, or any interview. I always do. Because I never know when it's going to lead me to something else or I'm going to um, meet somebody who's going to, um, who, who's for my next job somewhere else. You know, you never know, right? So entertain, every, I entertain, me personally, every interview possible I can. You know, um, and I obviously I tell them my rate, what I want. And then I, I usually go on Airbnb and I say, okay, I'm going to live there for how many months initially until I move there, let's say. Okay, that's what I need to spend um, here's the location. Here's a nice area. I usually find uh, the best place to get chicken shawarma usually in that area, wherever it's at. I, that's what it's just always do. And I just look at some of the reviews. In my mind, I just think about like what it's like to live there, you know, and what it could be like. You know, I had a I actually had a, a potential job. I didn't get an interview, but I had a potential job and it was for it was one hundred dollars an hour. And it was for like an architect level uh, position in storage. And it was in the um, Rhode Island area, like, um, you know, near Rhode Island and, and Massachusetts. So I did my homework. I looked at places to live, you know, it's like $2,500 a month, roughly, right? But $100 an hour, okay, you know, done deal. And that was a 1099 job, by the way. So that's all That's all cash for me. You know, I just have to save some money for the for the taxes. So... That's like, um, what is 100, 180, 190,000 a year, something like that, um, $100 an hour. And I just did my homework as if I'm going there. You know, I went on maps.google.com and looked at different areas where I could live. Uh, again, the same thing, a nice fish market, where to get oysters, where to get clam chowder, where to get shawarma. And that's that's what I do when I when I look for a job. I really, I really try to really find out uh, how to actually go in and in, into those uh, jobs, and it just really helps me out because I'm, I'm I'm waiting for that 
you know, it's going to happen, right? Eventually. For me, I think it's going to happen. You know, eventually it's going to happen where I make $100 an hour or $200 an hour or whatever it is, right? Some just crazy money. Wow, that'd be awesome. And it, it, you just keep knocking at the door. Just keep like, you know, I, I figure if I just keep, you know, honing my craft, it's going to happen eventually. You know, will I be a millionaire? I don't know. Maybe. Who knows, right? But you, know, you never know. But I have to first reach, you know, I don't know, before a million, of course, you have to reach, you know, a half million, right? So that's definitely, you know, that's something to entertain. And I'd, I'd say that as well. Um, the one thing that helps me out is I, I have like a, um, I write down all the bills I have. I write down all the cost. And then I say, okay, it's a calculator. Here's what it's going to cost for me to live in that area, you know, after the, the salary. And I have that already. I kind of have it for different re- areas of the United States already. Um, no, knowing, you know, cause I've been on so many interviews and or searched so many jobs every time I just keep track of it. So I know the range of salary, how much it's going to take for me to live there, um, to live comfortably. Right. And you know, um, what, how, what can I take advantage of the area at the time? For instance, if I, I got a job in Minnesota, all of America every weekend, just go in there and just fill up my Yelp. Or flip the TripAdvisor and just start like taking reviews of every place that you go to and maybe talk about the area, you know, and this just kind of, I mean, this is me anyway, right? Just talk about where you're at, talk about the niceness of the area and just comment on it. Like do the, maybe do the blog post about it, um, the area, what, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, take lots of pictures, pay, paint an image for other folks who've never been there. For, through your perspective, basically. And, you know, if you um, if you get a job overseas, that's about a month. It usually takes a month to process, you know, to get over there and all that. And they usually, they pay the, the so they pay you for the flight over there, right? Like, for instance, in the Middle East, right? Pretty much anywhere in the Middle East. Um, they'll pay for your flight over there. They'll put you up in a hotel. They'll give you a com- company accommodation, uh, for how long are you there? And um, they'll give you like um, tra- travel uh, money to come back every six months or whatever. You know, and if you're there, say like you're in Dubai, right, or whatever. I mean, you could go anywhere you want in Dubai and just go to the, I think, Burj Dubai. No, it's called Burj Arab, I think it is. Yeah, tallest building in the world. And if you want to go to the Maldives, if you want to go to Sri Lanka, if you want to go to Bombay, you're literally like, an hour, an hour's flight or two hours flight, something like that away uh, from those areas. If you want to go to the Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt, if you want to go to Giza pyramids, you're like literally two hours away. You go to Lebanon, that's Beirut, Lebanon. You're two two hours away or hour and a half away. Uh, basically, Turkey, a um, little bit Morocco. Uh, you're right there, you know, and you know, just kind of, you know, open your perspective maybe a little bit more, right? Um, on things. And, you know, I don't know, I don't know you, Jack. I don't know if you've been overseas or not, but um, if you haven't, that's a good, good way to start, you know. And that goes for really anybody, too. When you're overseas, I mean, I've lived overseas, so I can tell you this. It's not for everybody, but you're, I think, I think for me, it just makes me more appreciative of, uh, of where, where I'm at and where, I, where, I, and where I'm from. And I, I just, it's, it's just amazing. You know, the, the problems that I, you know, that exist here, they don't exist over there, you know, and, um, it's, it's just different. It's just way different perspective on things. Um, you know, times when you're eating, you're eating outside and you're, um, you, like of course chicken shawarma, right? we know about that. I'm a chicken shawarma guy. So we're outside eating chicken shawarma with some friends and just talking for hours. Now, I've heard, I haven't been to Europe much, right? But I've heard that's how it is in Europe, where they just talk, like the Greek people, they just talk for hours, you know, and just enjoy each other's company, right? That's the kind of lifestyle over there. That's what it's like over there in uh, in the Middle East. So, Jackie, I think, hopefully this has been informative to you. And, um, you know, let me know, or anybody else, let me know. Uh, send me a message in Anchor. There's an Anchor app. Uh, if you want to know more about whatever it is I'm talking about or the, 
you want to know more about the, I'll put the show notes, I'll put the course that I have on Udemy. It's uh, that you know the link to it, so that you, you can you can go to it and, and get the training yourself. So appreciate everybody listening to this podcast, and have a great day.